Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. The good SBC guy seems to be back inside of FIBA 21. The content is rolling. The pack SBCs, the player SBCs, icon upgrade packs, it's all coming out this week. It's feeling a lot like Bundesliga and La Liga team of the season once again inside of this game and that means we're having a lot of good content and that is exactly the case so i want to talk about the sbcs we had yesterday with the swedish lads which was a dope idea and concept from ea also the 85 plus player pick sbc i want to talk about that some of these ptg price movements with match day two officially starting today for the euros uh, and I believe maybe the Copa America as well. Match day two starting, the second matches. Some of these clubs are going to be looking to rack on their second win. And how that, how's that going to affect the prices? We'll talk about that a bit. And of course, should you maybe be selling some SBC fodder? Because of course, that stuff jumped up again to another little bit of another level today. 84s are up higher. 86s are up higher. 85s are even up a little bit higher because of what happened with this content and as it continues to roll out this week. But I have some other reservations about that part of the market, and we'll talk about that in a second. But first, again, the good SBC guy is back, and it feels so good because we're getting great content. 85-plus player pick. Again, when we have these icon upgrades and these like 85-plus, 84-plus, think back to the Bundesliga tots and La Liga team this season. It's that sort of vibe, right? Really good content, really good SBCs. A lot of people are happy about the menus right now in FIFA, which is a huge, tremendous W. But I want to talk about these Sweden national players because I think this concept from EA is something that we need to see again because this was incredible, right? Not the most popular nation out there in terms of everybody and linking players on this game, but the way they did this was fantastic, right? Three different SBC players. Lindelof is good value right now. I'm going to tell you that. It's a decent card. Don't know how he's going to play in game, but it's a cool card, right? And that's the word I'm going to use a lot with these SBCs. This idea is cool, right? It's fun. Forsberg juiced to a 93 with great stats. I think that's arguably one of the best value cards as a part of this team with the Leipzig links, Bundesliga links. That's a dub. Eliasson, you know, nice, you know, cool card, right? Decent position. Uh, left mid, maybe links to Isak. You have some um, League One links as well, I believe. You know, that's probably the most overlooked card as a part of this set. But Forsberg and Lindelof are both Ws. Technically, Lindelof has more in-game stats than the brand new PTG Davinson Sanchez at this time. 86 passing, 87 dribbling, 94 defense, 92 physical, uh, you know, medium high work rates, a high and average body type. This, this card looks really good, right? And of course, with the Manchester United links, He's got 1,400 upvotes. It's only coming in at about, if you click on this right here, it doesn't show you on the card uh, for whatever reason. It's 170,000 coins through Lindelof. Dobinson Sanchez is 220K on the market with less stats in total. So that's why I think this Lindelof is good value. Of course, Dobinson still has the upgrade ability there, but it's going to take Dobinson a lot of upgrades to get from 72 passing and 81 dribbling to 86 passing and 87 dribbling. So I think this Lindelof, especially if you're a United fan, is a W, fun card to have. And again, that's the word. It's just, this is fun. This is cool. This is fun. I hope for some of the other nations that we have coming out, it looks like we're maybe going to see these nation players every two or three days since we had Jimenez on Sunday. We had the Sweden nation players today, on, yesterday on Tuesday. Now, of course, if you complete the whole set, you get a prime gold players pack as well. I don't think that's going to entice too many people. I think the real enticing here, the thing in here is just the Lindelof and the Forsberg, and maybe you complete Elias and just to have cool cards as a part of your club. Because again, a lot of you guys are doing 81 plus player picks. You're crafting right now. And those are SBCs you maybe are getting done just because you have the fodder. So it's just a great time of content on FIFA right now. Whether or not you think this is, you know, super meta content, it's just cool, right? It's cool. It's fun. And it's a GG, right? The 85 plus day was nice as well. I didn't get anything good from it. But of course, that also pushed the fodder market up. And this is what I wanted to talk about next is where is SBC fodder headed? What can we expect with these cards on the market? And what stuff has already flown and gone a lot higher? And something we, we may need to keep an eye out on just in case EA changes some things. But 84s, right? 84s are now all around 7,000 coins. I believe they might be dropping off a little bit, but you see this spike right here, right? Of course, when those new SBCs come out, like the 85 plus player pick today, that's going to cause fodder to spike right away. Now, the thing is, we've been talking, wow, 83s are up a lot. 3,000 coins for 83s. That was a really good buy. Uh, but the 84s that were down at like 4,000 coins, they're now up to 7K. 85s, they were at 8. They're at 11. You might be looking at these and like, man, 
These are only up to 7,000 coins or 8,000 coins, maybe in the peak of the day. Why are they not reaching, you know, 11, 12K like they were before? Look at these graphs in the last two weeks, right? They've gone from 5K or this Kai Hone has gone from 5K up to 7 back down to five, back up to seven where he is now. Why are we not seeing these cards explode? And the reason for that, in my opinion, is, is that we have a lot of people, A, investing in fodder. You have these fluctuations, right? It's just a very easy entry. You buy fodder on the weekend, you sell it in the midweek. You buy it again on the weekend, you sell it on the midweek, right? And that's been the trend for the past two weeks. And I think people are going to kind of abide by that again today. And I think that since people have been making so much money off of SBC fodder, it's been a great way to invest and trade during the weeks with the fluctuations is that it's going to continue. A lot of people are making money off of fodder right now. So I, it's, it's really going to take multiple weeks of big time content like what we've seen this week. It's going to take an icon player pick SBC. It's going to take multiple of these 85 plus. It's going to take player SBCs coming out every single day, in my opinion, to make all of the spotter go back up super duper duper high. And also the supply is not stopping either. That's a big part of it as well. We're having tradable um, challenge SBCs that are dropping. And of course, we still have lightning rounds that are coming out every single weekend as well. We had lightning rounds with ultimate tots. Last weekend, we had lightning rounds and pack supply with the new PTG cards. And I honestly think it's looking like we're going to see a team two of Path to Glory as well. So that to me makes me think that we're going to see fodder drop down this weekend as well. Because again, if you look inside of the game here, almost all of these SBCs are expiring in two days or less, right? Uruguay Nation player Jimenez, two days. Jota, two days. Peace check, two days. Of course, the Sweden Nation players, there's three SBCs here. They're giving you a bit more time on that, seven days remaining. But a lot of this other stuff, it all expires on Friday. The primer moments upgrade. That makes me think we're going to reset for another week of festival football with Path to Glory players and whatever is going to come out with like a team two of PTG cards and all of that. And fodder is probably going to drop down low again this weekend. So with that being said, if you're happy with the profit on some of your fodder, if you want to sell it and take your coins and you're trying to do these kind of weekly fluctuations with fodder, probably going to be a decent time to get out of stuff today. Now I will say this as a caveat, right? Like I bought Vitzel for 4.7. Let me go check him out and see where he's at. This is my only reservation today. We have rewards coming later tonight. And everybody knows that rewards bring supply to the market. This happened last week as well. What is going on? Uh, I'll, I'll make 1,000 coins in June. Sounds good, right? I'll, I'll list this up for 1,000 coin profit. Uh, but we have what we've seen the past couple weeks on um, Wednesdays is that we have the Wednesday content. It comes out and people start selling their fodder at that initial bounce. So we might have whatever content drops today in FIFA, we might see an initial bounce like we did today on 84s, 85s, and 86s. You see a spike, right? It actually, the, the graph looks better on the 84s because it was an 84 rated squad today for the 85 plus player pick. So you see a squad or a bounce like this, boom, it goes up, right? Then everybody starts selling their investments. And since fodder is very heavily invested in right now and everybody knows they can make coins on it, I think that if we have content like that today and we see a spike, that might be your last chance to get out. Now, fodder is up, right? 84s or 7K. Like you can see, I bought this Vitzel for 4.7. I'm going to list them up at 7.3. Probably going to sell, right? I bought this Navas at 5.4. Now, the one thing I will say is your return on investment has not been as good for some of the higher tier cards that are more expensive in terms of fodder. Your best return on investment have been actually like the goalkeepers because these guys drop the lowest and these all these SBCs that have been coming out they don't require a lot of chemistry. So this guy, Berkey, has gone from like 4,000 coins flat all the way up to basically 7K. You know, he was actually like 7.5, almost 8,000 coins today in the peak of the set, in the, the buy-up with that player pick being released. So all that I'll say is, again, for fodder today, this I think the graph's going to look a lot like this. Whatever content we have, probably going to make fodder go up a little bit. That might be your time to get out in the first 30 minutes to an hour after the content dropped today on Wednesday. Um, and then you're going to see it. people who invested start listing, start undercutting their cards. Price are going to drop until rewards. Price are going to get low at rewards again and then go back up a little bit um, into Thursday with the content, with people doing SBCs after they pack their foot champions rewards and stuff like that. But I just wanted to kind of talk with you guys about the fodder situation because I think that's going to be, again, I think the trend is going to maintain itself because I really think the only reason the trend wouldn't um, maintain itself is if we were to have some sort of 
no no uh, supply this weekend, right? I think no supply this weekend in terms of pack supply, in terms of lightning rounds and a promo team being in packs. That would make fodder kind of stay the same. And if we keep S getting SBCs, then it will maybe rise. But that's the kind of fodder situation right now. I've got a lot still in the club that I bought, like 84s at 4K, 85s at 8,000 coins. And it would be nice to have some of my coins. So I'm kind of thinking about taking the money on some of that. Um, but... Just to put that out there, you can still hold on to it if you want to, right? 84 is at 4K. Buy those anytime and hold on to them as long as you want because you're going to make coins in the future. You're making coins this week, but I think they'll go higher still later on. I think you will see 84 is at like 10K plus once again. Although one thing that's an issue is that they decreased some of the price thresholds. They decreased 84's price thresholds to 10,000 coins. So right now what we're seeing is um, a lot of these cards are actually toward of sort of like two thirds of the way or even higher into their um, their PRP here, which is the price range percentage. Like there's, right now Isco is at 61% of his price range uh, since he's a 7,000 coin card at an 11,000 coin max. So usually when you see those PRPs get pretty high, that makes you think, hey, maybe it's time for me to take the cash on, on a card like that. So that's just kind of one thing as well that maybe if EA decreased the price range of some of this SBC fodder, they're going to try to keep it in check for the next couple of weeks as a part of, you know, what's going on in this game. So that would be another reason why if you are a bit skeptical and you want to take your coins, that it would be a good time to do it probably today. Now, again, you're going to see a drop off on fodder, in my opinion, as we head into rewards. But that's inevitable because there's been a lot of investing here and a lot of people have, uh, you know, spent some coins on that to make coins. So that's my fodder rant. Uh, actually, there's one more thing. A great opportunity on this fodder a couple weeks ago at the end of team of the season were these, were these TOTS cards, right? When you had 86 rated TOTS cards at the same price as the gold 86s, look at these, they're flying, right? This Zimmerman is 14K, he's now 29. And to be honest, if you have some of these in your club, take a check, right? Make sure you don't have any tradable TOTS in your club because they're going for Buku uh, money, right? Because a lot of these SPCs are requiring, requiring team of the weeks or TOTS cards, both of which are going up. Now, the only thing that's going to make this stuff drop is if EA would drop a pack code for like a guaranteed TOTS player pack. And if there's no rating um, or, you know, it's very um, generic, that would make me think that EA could drop a very cheap SBC for a tradable team of the season player. And maybe what they'll do in the future is start putting some of these cards back into packs to supply them on the market. That's something that we see during the summer. But if your if your initial investment on some of these TOTS cards, uh, if you did put some money into them, you're looking really good because a lot of these are going up. So that's a W in terms of that as well. You can keep holding on to those until you see some sort of code because we're, again, just going to get more and more SBCs that require those TOTS cards. So again, speaking of SBCs, what we're seeing on the market is prices dropping. Now, I made a great flip last night with Urente. I was talking about it on the YouTube video. I was trying to get him right around 1.1 mil. I bought Urente at 1.1 million coins, sold him at 1.27. And right now, tonight, he is a million coins. He's dropped off a lot. And that has been the trend today with some of these PTG cards. Foden's about the same. Verratti in Italy play today, and we'll talk about that in a second. But Acuna, he is down a lot. And Urente is down a lot, of course. That's combined with Argentina drawing uh, two nights ago and Urente drawing with Spain and Sweden a couple nights ago as well. Now, of course, you guys watched the France and Germany game yesterday and Havertz is down a bit, not a ton, but Nabry is down a decent amount as well. I'm going to be watching Nabry tonight because I think that's the same scenario as Urente, although he is not as rare or as, um, I guess, hyped up as Urente. I still think that left mid Nabry spot, he played pretty well yesterday. There's a lot of people that need those links uh, for the Bayern and the German links in their FIFA Ultimate teams. So I'm kind of watching this Nabry card, right? The same situation with Urente. If he were to just get too low, I would be very tempted to maybe maybe buy one of these and, and see where it can go. But I, I need to see the price drop off a little bit more. It was about like 4 or 5 a.m. UK last night, which was like, you know, midnight for me in the U.S. when I saw that Urente hit his low. So I'm going to watch Nabry tonight and see if he gets down low as well. Now, one thing I will mention is we start match day two today. So if you got fantasy teams, you got match predictors um, for the Euros, make sure you go and check those out. But this guy... Verratti, he had a low of really weird today during the game, during the France and Germany game. Somehow he dropped like 30,000 coins like in 10 minutes when nobody was on the market. He was down to like 450K. This card is one that I would keep my eye on because again, Italy with a win today would get two wins 
on the road to three in the first upgrade for this Verratti card. So, you know, one upgrade to this guy and he's he's already looking insane. He's going to look even more insane. So Italy and, you know, some of the teams that are playing today are getting their first shot of that second win, right? I know we don't have any Finland players, but if Finland were to get a W today, that would be their second win. Uh, and of course, Italy is where we're looking though because of the Verratti card um, and then the Florenzi card as well. Um, if you did that SBC, that would be two wins down for Italy. So that's going to make this Verratti, I think, rise up a little bit towards content because they play the late game today. Um, so just kind of keep an eye out on that as well. Um, if we do see those prices rising, I would not be surprised at all. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is just the potential for a PTG Team 2. I want to talk about this just for a tiny bit because I think this needs to be talked about. You know, it hasn't been all over the graphics that EA has been showing, but EA's tweet earlier this week showed Team 1 down here at the bottom. And also in the tweet, they mentioned uh, Festival Football is here and with it, the first path to glory side. And that really, really, really makes me think. And I'm going to actually check the loading screen right now to see if there's any more. Um, yeah, here it even says right here, right? FOF path to glory team one right here, literally right down here. Team one is available for two more days. So that really makes me think that we're going to get a second team. It feels like all signs are pointing towards that. So that's very interesting as well. Maybe we will see on Thursday as we get later into the week, some sort of like hints or loading screen and stuff like that. But I just wanted to put that out there for you guys as well so that you're 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 thinking. And that's going to be interesting though because again, if they're dropping brand new live cards into packs on Friday, um, that means that, you know, a handful of the cards they could drop into packs might even be like on, you know, they could get their third win. When's the first possible day you could get a third win? Italy could have their third win on Sunday. If they win against Wales, they could literally have that upgrade locked in for, for Florenzi and for Verratti by Sunday. Now, the only issue is that card uh, or those cards would not, not upgrade until Friday, June 25th. Friday, June 25th is the first day that we could have upgrades on these cards. Because again, on the EA website, it did say that the upgrade day is going to be on the following Friday it might take up to 72 hours to appear in game. But I wanted to make that clear and I wanted to kind of point that out because um, if they were to do a team two of Path to Glory, I almost feel like it might only be like, they would only be in packs for a couple of days because I really feel like EA Sports wouldn't want to put cards in packs that were going to be upgraded like guaranteed. Like they put an Italian player in packs next week or on Friday and then boom, that card gets upgraded and it's still in packs and it's due the upgrade. I don't know if EA wants to do that. I don't know if they're scared of that. It's something they've never really done before. So I'm very interested. I guess they have done it before because potentially the what if cards could have gotten upgraded while they were still in packs. And some of them actually did. If you think about Mbappé, it was literally the first game that he played. They got the clean sheet and he got the upgrade. So never mind. I kind of take some of that back. I'm interested to see what EA would do, but I could also see it being just a weekend promo. Like they throw a second team in packs just for a couple days. Now also a quick shout as well. We'll talk about this a little bit more. I hope we have a card design coming for specific man of the match items because again, with match day two starting, and that means match day one is over, are we going to get man of the matches? They could come anytime from today until Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Anytime between now and then, we honestly could have man of the match cards if they were going to do like a team of the match day. And that could be our content on Friday as well. Um, and maybe they're not going to do a team two. But again, when they brand the stuff as team one, it makes you really think about having a team two coming. So I know this video is getting a bit long. There is a lot to talk about. And I just want to talk about it all with you guys today. But I hopefully, hopefully that does help you out. Again, trading has been fantastic. If you spend time grinding the market, open bids are just, they're, they're phenomenal. They're really, 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 really good at this time. You find some rare cards like this Malin, this Ndombele, this Neuer, this Vieira. I bought at 598,000 coins and it looks like I just got a sale at 680K. So that was a really, really good profit right there on that card. I mean, we're talking like 50,000 coins profit after tax almost on that flip today. So that was a big time GG. Icons are great, rare out of pack specials team this season's they're just great, right? It's a very easy time to make coins. Get on the bids. That's all that I'll say. But if you enjoyed this video, smash thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan Foot Accountant. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.